guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Chances are you have heard of mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs, exchange traded funds. And sometimes it can seem like they're completely different things. And then other times it can seem like they're pretty much the same thing. And the answer to both of those impressions is they can both be correct. It really just depends on the fund you are talking about. So in this video, we're going to do an introduction into each of those types of investment vehicles and then do a quick comparison and contrast of them. Let's kick it off with mutual funds because they are the oldest of these three types of investment vehicles. The easiest way to think about mutual funds is to think of them as a basket of investments that allows for instant diversification. The typical mutual fund is going to hold at least a hundred different individual companies. Think about that for a minute, a hundred different companies. Think about how hard it would be for you to go out and invest in a hundred different companies. Even if you wanted just one share of each of those companies of their stock, you would have to complete a hundred different transactions. You would have to go out and buy one share of Apple. That'll be $154. Then you want one share of Google. That's $2,800. And a share of Facebook. That'll be another $380. You can see how this would get quite tedious and quite expensive really quickly. But you're an astute investor. You know the importance of diversification. You don't want to put all of your money into one company, say Microsoft, no matter how great that company is. Because when you put all of your money into one company, it's like putting all of your money into one basket. On the one hand, things could work out fantastic. That company could soar to the moon and beyond and you could be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Or that company could basically crash and burn and pretty much implode. Hello Enron. Or maybe the company doesn't really do much of anything. It doesn't really go up or down. It just sort of putters along for years on end. There are plenty of companies that do that as well. And that is why you want to diversify rather than picking individual stocks. When people equate investing to gambling, they are often talking about stock pickers, people who go out there and choose individual stocks. And if you are picking individual stocks with any sort of real thought or research put into it, it is akin to gambling. It's the same as going into a casino and putting it all in black because you think that that's the number that's going to come up or the color that's going to come up. Mutual funds help to remove this gambling aspect of investing. And while they were invented in 1924, they didn't become wildly popular until the 1980s. Mutual funds allow you to buy one fund and immediately hold many, many stocks. So in that sense, they allow for instant diversification. They remove the need to pick the right stock because they allow you to hold so many different stocks. And it is easier to be successful when you have more chances. For instance, let's say you have a quarter and you want this quarter to land heads up. You have one flip. There's a 50-50 chance that that quarter will land the way you want it. However, let's instead say you have one quarter, but you have a hundred flips and you need it to land heads up. The odds of it not landing heads up at any point in a hundred different flips are pretty much zero. If you can spread out your risk, you can increase your chances of success. So you don't have to stress about picking the one right stock. Instead, you just buy a mutual fund. It holds hundreds of stocks. Inevitably, many of them are going to be winners. And it's also wildly more convenient as opposed to going around and saying buy one share of this company and one share of that company and so on. It's one transaction, simple, easy, done. Mutual funds make investing easy. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have a lot of investing experience. And also, if you want to buy a stock, you have to have the exact amount of money that that stock is selling for. That's not the case with mutual funds. So if you want to buy one share of Apple stock, you have to have $154.30. Or you can buy a tech-based mutual fund that owns Apple and literally hundreds of other tech-forward companies. And boom, you own Apple and literally hundreds of other tech-based companies. That's the fine print right there. This fund by Fidelity, the Select Technology Portfolio, goes for $29.91 per share. That's a low price for a stake in 142 different tech companies. But it gets even better than that. You can buy partial shares of mutual funds. So let's say that you have $500 to invest 
That would allow you to buy 16.72 shares of this Fidelity Fund, VSTPX. And Fidelity would love to sell you those 16.72 shares. Fractional shares are sold all the time in mutual funds. It makes them very easy and convenient to buy. You can invest a set dollar amount. That's pretty rare with stocks. Nowadays, the platform Robinhood does allow fractional share buying of stocks, but it does have its limitations. If you want to take your money out of that brokerage house and say go to a different one, you would have to sell your fractional shares first. So mutual funds allow thousands upon thousands of investors to pool their funds together giving them great buying power. This money, often in the hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, is pooled together and managed by a fund manager. The fund manager is likely Ivy League educated and entrusted to pick the right stocks, stocks that will go up, meaning the fund will perform well and the investors will make money. This fund manager researches the market and companies 24 seven. They have a team of people supporting them and they have more access to information at their fingertips than you and I could ever imagine. In other words, they have a leg up in the investing world. And they are paid handsomely for this job. Careers in this field start with six figures and go up from there. And there's often quite hefty bonuses throughout the year as well. The reason these jobs pay so well is that these funds charge you the investor fees. Actively managed funds can have fees that go all the way up to 2%. And that doesn't include any upfront fees necessary to get into the fund or fees necessary to get out of the fund if you decide to sell. And at first glance, you might be thinking, does 2% really matter? And the answer is yes, it does. If you were to invest $6,000 per year for 40 years and at 8% rate of return, that money would grow to almost $1.7 million. However, if you were to invest $6,000 per year for 40 years, this time at a 6% rate of return, that money would grow to just under $1 million. Your total return is almost cut in half. Fees matter and they matter more than you think. So then we have index funds and index funds have gotten a lot of hype lately and I think rightfully so. They're absolutely amazing and they are actually a specific type of mutual fund. So they have all the great qualities of a mutual fund, think instant diversification, the ability to buy fractional shares, but they don't have someone at the helm dictating what stocks the fund buys. Instead, they simply track an index like the S&P 500. So whatever the index holds, they hold and in those proportions as well. So if you wanna go out and buy the Vanguard 500 or the Fidelity 500 index fund, you essentially just bought the S&P without having to go out and buy 500 individual stocks. It's a big perk to simply track an index rather than have someone man the ship because time has proven again and again that very few people have the ability to beat the market. If they're able to beat the market, they're a unicorn and you probably know their name. Think Warren Buffett or Peter Lynch. These managers running the show at actively managed funds routinely fail to meet their benchmarks or even keep pace with the market. Rather, they simply drag down the performance of the fund with their high fees that pay for their expensive salaries. Comparatively, the fee for the Fidelity 500 index fund is 0.015%. And the fee for the Vanguard 500 fund is 0.04%. By far and away, that is light years better than actively managed funds. Then we have ETFs or exchange traded funds. These investment vehicles are passively managed and tend to track an index like an index fund. However, they are bought and sold like stocks, which makes them distinctly different from mutual funds and index funds. Mutual funds and index funds are bought and sold at the close of the market day. Once the market closes, the new price for the fund is set, calculating in all the changes for the holdings for that day. Once that price is set, all of the buy and sell orders for the fund, index or mutual, are executed. There is only one fund price on any given day. There is only one time at which buy and sell orders are executed for index or mutual funds. 
With ETFs trading like stocks, their price changes throughout the day. The price they are at 10 a.m. could be very different from the price they are at 3 p.m. or even 3.05 p.m. And you can buy an ETF at any different point throughout the day. ETFs are very similar to index funds in that they tend to track an index. For instance, many index funds will actually offer an ETF version of that fund. In this instance, the holdings of the index fund and the ETF are going to be the same, and they're going to be held in the exact same proportions. So in this situation, they can be seen as pretty much the same investment. And it's also important to note that they're going to have very comparable expense ratios. But it's important to note that ETFs can only be bought and sold in whole shares, much like stocks. So if you have $500 to invest and you wanted to invest in the Vanguard 500 ETF, that one share would be $416.57, leaving you with $83.43 not invested. That money would just be left sitting in your checking account or your savings account or wherever you bought this fund from until you saved up to buy another full share. Of course, this is not the case with Robinhood. If you happen to be buying ETFs on that platform, you can buy fractional shares, just like you can buy fractional shares of stocks on that platform but that is not the case with most brokerage houses. Remember, this is distinctly different from mutual funds. Mutual funds, you would have been able to invest that full $500 because you can buy fractional shares all the time. They don't care if you buy 0.7 of a share or 1.3 of a share. The other distinct difference between mutual funds and index funds and ETFs is that you can set up automatic deposits when it becomes mutual funds and index funds. That is not the case with ETFs. With ETFs, you have to manually go in and execute the trade. So if you want to invest in the Vanguard 500 index fund and say you want to invest $500 a month, you can set that up as a reoccurring transaction to happen every single month on say the first of the month. That is not the case with the Vanguard 500 ETF. Instead, every single month, you would manually have to go in and execute that trade. Here's a table that breaks down the comparison of these funds. At the end of the day, ETFs are more similar to index funds than they are dissimilar. However, and this is a personal opinion, I like index funds better. And my reason is twofold. I like to automate my investing. I like to have a set amount that I invest every single month. I don't want to manually have to go in and make a trade. I want to set it and forget it. You can do that with index funds. You cannot do that with ETFs. So if I earmark $1,000 for investments, I want that entire $1,000 invested. So the convenience of being able to buy partial shares matters to me. I don't want to concern myself with the price of a specific share and figuring out how many shares I can buy. I just want to invest the amount I want to. Simple as that. That being said, I'm not against ETFs. I just find them to be more work in my opinion. So I primarily invest in index funds. I do own one ETF and that is QQQ. I own it because it tracks the NASDAQ. When I was looking to make my purchase, I wanted a fund that tracked the NASDAQ. I wasn't able to find an index fund that did that. So I found an ETF and I made that purchase. I love the fund but I do find it to be more inconvenient than my index funds, just because of the work that I have to do to manually execute those trades. So what do you guys think? Do you like ETFs? Do you like index funds? You can't like actively managed funds better and be a fan of this channel. You know we are actively against fees and that's all actively managed funds are. Lots and lots of fees in your face. So let me know down below in the comments. I read every single one of them. I respond to as many of them as I can. That's gonna do it for me today, guys. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you know of anyone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I hope you have a good one and I will see you soon. Bye.